Hello, I'm Lowell Martin, and this is MCC Today. You're going to learn things. On today's show, we have Gloria Adams, Nick Kirkland, and Morgan Booth. Please stay tuned. You're going to learn a lot. Thank you to the teachers for encouraging me when I wasn't sure where to start. For seeing my potential, even when I didn't. For inspiring me to reach farther and try harder. Thank you, MCC. You helped me change my future. Find your wings at MCC. And we are here with Miss Morgan Booth. How are you doing today? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing well. Now, you are a language and literature instructor. Yes. However, <laughs> next semester, you will be the division chair yes. for the language, literature, and what is the, what's the title? Language and literature division. Language and literature division. Yes. It used to be language, literature, and success, but yes. they made mine an, a separate division yes. last year, I think, yes. wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yes, it was last year. So, incoming chair, yes. you, you're going to come in and just like... <laughs> Change everything. I'm going to hold it in the road. <laughs> yes. There you go. I don't blame you. I wanted you on the show today to talk about um, the classes that you teach mm -hmm. and uh, why they're important for our students. So, you, what classes do you teach? Currently, I teach Comp 1 both in the classroom and online. Um, I have a Comp 2 online. I'll also be teaching Comp 2 in the classroom in the spring. Um, I have an Honors American Lit 2 at the moment, um, that, and I'll also teach that as a regular class in the fall, um, on, in the spring, online. So a little why, bit of everything. Why do students need, I want to talk about the Comp classes first, mm -hmm. why do students need good communication skills, good written communication oh, skills. Oh goodness. Um, everything in our world revolves around how you document it. Mm -hmm. So if a student you know, says, well, I'm not going to major in English. Why do I have to write? Why do I have to know how to write? Well, you're going to have a boss one day that says, put that in writing for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a nurse has to chart and it has to be clear enough that the next nurse coming on shift can understand you know, what you did with that patient a few hours before. So everything really does revolve around writing. You have to be able to send a coherent email. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, that's what's so important. And it's not just the grammar punctuation, but mm -hmm. it's the organization of thought. Yes, most definitely. Okay. To be able, for someone to be able to read what you have written and clearly know what you intended, the question that you wanted to ask, the clarification that you're seeking. If they can't do that coherently, then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And I tell students all the time when they come in the Success Center and we help them uh, uh, get started on papers mm -hmm. and things like that, we want it to be as clear as possible so there is no room for interpretation or misinterpretation right. of what you are trying to say. Exactly. Now in Comp 1, it's more about uh, the grammar, the punctuation, the getting used to writing multi-paragraph essays. Mm -hmm. On okay. a collegiate level, yes. What is Comp 2 involved? So Comp 2 is based on literature. Okay. So students read literature and then they have to analyze it and interpret it. And when they interpret it, they are putting their, inter their own interpretation, but they have to learn how to do it not saying, I think this, because you know, they're not an expert quite yet. So mm -hmm. you know, they have to be able to word it so that their thoughts are are coherent and that they have analyzed it well and it leaves their reader no room to question what they thought about that particular piece that they're writing on. And to, to, to look at a, a work, whether it be a play, a poem, mm -hmm. a short story, mm -hmm. and uh, come up with their own ideas about that and be able to back up what they're saying. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and they it's have to, not just a feeling that, you know. <laughs> they have to back it up. They have to be able to find evidence to support it. They have to be able to research it if need be. Um, and that's another really good life skill, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to take that to the workplace and back up whatever claim it is you're trying to make to your superior. If you have no proof or evidence for that, then they're not going to take it very seriously. So mm -hmm. teaching them how to find evidence to support their opinion is very important. How do you handle the students who come in and say, I hate to read? And we, we seem to have more and more, more and those, more of yes. those. 
because I always love to read. That was mm -hmm. my escape. I love to read. Yes, I, I love to do that. Uh, however, and in fact, uh, yesterday uh, in the success center, I was talking to a young man. I was like, tell me a book. What's the last book that you read cover to cover that you weren't assigned it in school? And he's like, I, none. <laughs> Blank stare. Yes. <laughs> none. How do we, how do we, first off, do you consider this a problem? Mm -hmm. And how do we handle it? It's definitely a problem because most of our students, I would say, um, fall into that category of, I've never read anything that I wasn't made to read. Uh, I think the way to overcome that is the classics have their place, and I know you and I both love mm -hmm. the classics. It's to find something that's new and different and appeals to their interests. So the more modern the literature, usually the better success we have with it. Um, they're more inclined to read it, and if they'll read it and enjoy it, then the next thing that we pitch to them in class, they're not quite so you know, adamant about, you know, right off the bat, I hated it, I didn't like it. They're right. a little bit more open to it. Well, I find that, because. Uh, I always heard that if a, if a person grows up in a household of readers that they will become a reader. That is not true. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, <laughs> That is not true that hasn't worked anymore. for me in my particular uh, instance. Because my kids, none of them were readers mm -hmm. at that, at the, during high school. Right. They became readers later on. Mm -hmm. So I think we can still hold out some hope yes. that they become readers. But into your literature classes, mm -hmm. why, why is it important to take and understand world lit or American lit, why is that important? They need to, students need to learn what has come before them so that number one, it just makes them better people. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes them better able to converse with whomever, wherever, on really, on any topic that comes up. Yes. So that's one thing it does. But the second thing it does is it teaches them, like for example, in American lit, it teaches them what our country was like 200 years ago, because that's not a world that I'm, I know any, you know, I, I didn't inhabit that world. Uh, and if you were to pick me up and put me there, I'm lost. That's mm -hmm. not the world I'm, I grew up in. Um, but they need that. They need to see how far we've come and how, you know, how our society today, like for example, our cell phones, how did that start? Well, it started with the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. That's where the race to technology really started all those years ago. So that's what they need. They need to see where it all where it all started, where it all began. And I also find it fascinating because I used to teach um, World Lit uh, one and two, and the ideas that we're still grappling that we're grappling mm -hmm. with today are ideas that have been grappled with for thousands of years. Yes. And as you said, to read what they were thinking about this mm -hmm. issue, what how they solved or attempted to solve this issue, you know, you know, that whole there's nothing new under the sun. As far as humanity and human, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, consciousness is concerned. Um, I remember when you first started here 40 million years ago, because we were we <laughs> were side by side. We were, <laughs> we were in uh, we were in side by side offices yes. and uh, we would have our M&Ms. <laughs> Oh, the M&M's, before <laughs> night classes. <laughs> before night classes, because we were here, those are, were some long days. Yes. But we were here, but you've been here 20-something years. Yes, 22 or 23, I can't remember, somewhere oh. around in there. <laughs> well, listen, I wanted you on the show to talk about, because I think, I think this is important. I think the communication is important, but I also think students need to understand why we're asking them to take these yes. classes. It's not just like, hey, let's fill a slot. Mm -hmm. No. There is a reason behind it. There's always it. a reason, yes. I'm going to have you on again when you are officially division chair. Okay. <laughs> so we can talk about, you know, the, the sword that you're taking to Ooh, the department. Goodness. I'm joking. Nope, yep, She's nope. not going to do that. She's <laughs> no, not gonna I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hold it the road. I've had good leadership before me. And again, I just want to, I just want to make sure I don't mess it up. So. Thank you, Morgan. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. Not essential. Never let anyone tell you that again. Never doubt your abilities to make a difference. How do I know this about you? Because I'm a teacher. I am the one who will push you harder and farther than you could have ever imagined. Teach you things that you never thought possible. And if you will give me 100%, then I will stand shoulder to shoulder with you and together we will change your future. MCC, find your wings. And we have Miss Gloria Adams here today. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Lowell. How are you? I'm doing well. Now, you are the Medical Assisting Technology Program Coordinator and Instructor. It's a mouthful, but yes, sir, I am. <laughs> and how long have you been there? Uh, been nine years that? now. Okay, so nine years. Okay. Started in 2013. Okay. I started this program from scratch. It okay. was not here until I came on board, and uh, we got it started that first year, and it's we've been rolling ever since. 
Now, uh, typically, how many new students do you take in in the in the fall? I take up to fifteen. Okay, is it only in the fall? Only in the fall. Okay, only in and the fall. what kind of prerequisites do the students have to uh, have taken before they can get into the program? We have three prereqs, okay. which is A M P one and two. Okay, and then computer. Okay. Now there are several gen ed classes that are spread out in each semester okay. and it is good for those students to have those gen ed courses out of the way. It is not a requirement but it's good um, on two different fronts. It's good because the student ha doesn't have to worry with those gen ed classes while they're taking my classes right. and it also boosts their numbers to get in the program because you know everything is blind admission here at MCC mm -hmm. and the more classes you have and the better grades you have the greater your chances of getting into any program, not just mine. And with the blind admission, I mean, literally, it does not matter who you know. Oh, absolutely <laughs> it not. It does not matter. Absolutely it does not. not matter, you know, it really doesn't because you, it's, as you said, blind admission, you don't know who these, mm -mm. that you go by the scores. Right. I get a spreadsheet <clears throat> and it has no names on it, mm -hmm. nowhere, anywhere. <laughs> all, all I get is numbers mm -hmm. and like for an ACT, um, it's a 16 to get in my program, um, but if you get a 16, you maybe only get one point for that. If you have, you know, a 20, you may get two or three points. So the more points you have at the end of the spreadsheet, the greater the chance to get in the program. Okay. So just like um, the gen ed classes, like, you know, English comp or psychology, an A will get you three points, a B will get you two points, a C only going to get you one point. So all of that adds up if you have them all out of the way. But you still can only accept 15. Right, 15 is my max. So that is your. So you have got to do well enough to, to be get at with, the top of the spreadsheet. <laughs> you want to get the, the top of the spreadsheet. Okay, now once you get in, how long does the program last? Okay, so my program is a two-year AAS, Associate of Applied Science degree. Okay. Um, so it's technically four semesters. Okay. Those prereqs are considered a semester. So you're with me for three semesters straight, fall, spring, and summer. Okay. So you start in August and you graduate in August, Okay. the next now, August. What kind of things do you teach them to do? A little bit of everything. Medical assisting is multi-skilled. They do administrative and clinical duties. Administrative being that person that's sitting at the front desk when you go to a regular walk-in clinic. They, they sign you in, they get your chart ready, they may do a little filing or coding and billing correspondence, they check you out, they take your money. Okay. Uh, and then the clinical part is pretty much anything dealing with the physician, mm -hmm. um, from vital signs to EKGs to pulmonary function tests to e, um So you removing. teach them how to, yes. how to use any of these correctly. Yes, I brought correctly. some toys, yes. Okay. Um, I call these my toys. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, vital signs, we have um, the thermometer that goes in the ear or the mouth. Blood pressure, of course, is a huge vital sign. Um, this little toy right here I use to teach the student the proper way to remove staples. Okay. Uh, so that's this, it's like fake skin. Okay. It is? Yes. Okay. So um, I have all kind of toys. Um, the school is great, the college is great about giving me the instructional needs, um, instructional equipment that I need to teach my student or show my student hands-on how to do it. And I, I think that's one of the really great things here is in all of these classes that that, that you, you learn about it and then you have to do it. Oh, right. And you have a lot of hours of clinical, of do, having to do it. A lot of hours. Now, when a student completes your program, what kind of jobs are available to them? Um, there are administrative and clinical. You had of said course. if someone goes into a mm -hmm. clinic, maybe right. that person. Right. Okay. Um, medical assistants don't typically work in the hospital setting as much because on the hospitals you have floors, and you know if you're on a floor, you're doing that all day long. Okay. Medical assistant, their selling point is multi-skilled, so they thrive better in the clinic setting, uh, whether it's a specialty clinic or a regular walk-in clinic or what have you. Um, they can float from the front desk to the back. You know, that physician is going to employ or may employ that medical assistant over two other employees because that MA can do both duties. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, salary, that would be better on him. He only has to pay one salary as opposed to two salaries. Okay. Um, so any, really any walk-in clinic. Um, now, I do have some MAs that have graduated that are doing travel. Okay. Uh, and and they're now, when doing you really well. When they finish your program, they have to go through boards, right? Yes, sir. They do. And once they go through boards and they pass the boards, they can go anywhere, anywhere. in the United States. Okay. That is the good thing about getting a credential. So my program, 
uh, when you graduate, you will not um, sit for a license. You sit for a credential. Okay. And the good thing about a credential is it's good in all 50 states. Okay. Um, so are the job openings there? Oh yes, they are much more pleasing to the pocketbook <laughs> in other states, um, like Louisiana, for instance. Um, they they make really really well. Okay. Um, I do have an MA in um, Montana right now. Oh my. And she's making bank. Okay. Okay. So, so the money's there. The, the money's jobs there, are there. The jobs are there. You know, ever since COVID, this right. older generation um, medical professional, COVID wiped them out. Mm -hmm. They're going home. So they've got to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So if if you come to MCC, whether it's my program or another program, the job opportunity is there. Now, when they finish this program, do you have do we have any agreements where they can go on and continue a degree? Oh yes, they can get a bachelor's in um, in medical science. Um, I've totally went blank here for a minute. <laughs> but yes, they can go on and further their degree. Just Health as an sciences. aside, that, that happened to me earlier before the cameras. I just completely blanked. <laughs> but um, Mississippi State, they have okay. a Bachelor's of Health Science. I think that's what it's called. Bachelor's okay. of Health Science. And they can go there. Um, Southern, um, they can go through Ole Miss. I mean, there's just, there's all kind of opportunities out there. Okay, so if a person is, you know, they're thinking about it and they're like, okay, uh, I think I want to do something in the medical. I'm not sure what it is. How do you sell your port, your program to them? I sell them as medical assisting, multi-skilled. You're not doing the same thing all day long. Like if you were, you know, let's say just a medical secretary, you could only sit at the front desk. Right. Um, with me, um, you know, I'm a little hyper, so kind of like he. Yeah, I'm a little so hyper, bad. and I don't like to sit around. I like to do things, you know. So, and and this with this degree, you can do just an array of different things. So it's multi-skilled, um, and you know, you most people when they get in a rut and they do the same thing over and over, day after day, year after year, they get burnt out. You're not going to get in a rut. You with are this. not going to get in a rut with this All right. because you are multi-skilled. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you today. for having me, Lola. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to have you on again. Okay. okay, I appreciate it. We'll be right back. Since 1996, the MCC Foundation Tuition Guarantee Program has provided students an opportunity to find their potential. Thousands of students have benefited from the program. Over $6 million have been invested in the students who learn and live right here in our community. This program is funded by individuals and businesses who believe in our students, our families, and the economic impact of an education at Meridian Community College. Now is your chance to offer support. Give today at meridiancc.edu give. And we are here with Mr. Nick Kirkland. How are you doing today? Doing well. Or I should say Chief Nick, Kirk, Nick Kirkland, because you are in charge of Meridian Community College's campus police. Yes, sir. Okay, and you have been a, a campus police officer for 12 years now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, a long time. <laughs> long time, many changes that you've seen in that time. A okay, lot of good changes. changes. Yeah. But many changes. I wanted you on the show today to talk about um, just campus safety because that is a you know we've had Dr. Hubner on many and and he we stress he stresses how important it is you know campus safety is mm -hmm. you know so we want to do everything in our power to ensure that our it, that anybody on campus is safe okay but I wanted to just get you on to talk about that so what if a, as a student on campus, what are the things that, that you recommend that they do or don't do to remain as safe as possible? Uh, one of the number one things we ask is to lock your doors. You'd be surprised how many car doors are left unlocked and you know people just go by and steal their sunglasses or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so we ask everybody make sure your doors are locked. Um, you know, if you're on campus at night, walk in well-lit areas. Mm -hmm. And and we do take recommendations if, if you walk in an area and you think it's dark or something would like lighting there, you know, you can always let us know. Okay. Uh, now, with, uh, uh, like, in dorms and stuff, do you also, like, okay, look, y'all need to keep your, do your dorm rooms Right, yes. Uh, if you're staying in a dorm, we, we don't want you to prop the doors open, you mm -hmm. know. Um, you're supposed to leave them locked anyway sure so we don't you know you don't want to take a rock and stick in the door to hold it open because you know if you're going out of your room somebody could go in there you never know these days mm -hmm. what may happen. with with <clears throat> um, so much happening 
you know, and as you said, we, we try to keep, we're, 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 we're trying to keep this bubble of safety here. But I, I noticed that we have a campaign too of if you see something, you know, kind of let y'all know that something's going on. Right. So the see something, say something is, uh, it's pretty new. We rolled out this year. There's uh, signs all over campus and they each have a QR code and it goes directly to that form. So if you scan it with your phone, you can put it in there and uh, it'll come to my email okay. and, and a few other people along the list. Uh, it used to be the old uh, incident form, I think it was called, or something another online. Mm -hmm. So we've made a lot of updates online to our web page. A lot of the forms are now, you know, where they used to be a piece of paper, they, you come fill the paper out. Now it's online and you submit the form, it comes directly to me. Mm -hmm. So just trying to save on paper, I guess. <laughs> well now, so if, if, uh, if a student say something is stolen from them, uh, do they fill out an incident or, they or they fill out a form? You know, is that the, it, 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 does that become, do y'all go through and do a, do a, a look at a camera footage yes, and stuff sir. like that? We have uh, quite a bit of cameras, mm -hmm. several hundreds of cameras on campus. So In the we, Success Center, and we're very happy about that, <laughs> there are cameras, yes. So we, um, you know, we, we take their, it'll be a voluntary statement is what it's called online. We mm -hmm. take that form and then we start investigating it and, you know, we go from there. But most everything that you've said is just a common sense approach to, and, and that's all it is, is Basically, just don't yeah. do something stupid. Right. You know, it, that should be the campaign, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, do uh, those stupid. signs probably wouldn't look as good. <laughs> probably not. But uh, uh, trying to keep us as safe as possible. And I also say, then let me ju let me just say, we have uh, in the Success Center, and this was put in a couple of years ago, panic button. Right. And uh, if it's hit, and it was hit accidentally, let me say, they come. Yeah. <laughs> All of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and when you're trying to say, okay, wait, 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 it was an accident, it was an accident, but it was just, it was, it's now humorous, but at the time, uh, no. But well, the problem, it looks like a garage door opener or a window blind, but. Well, it's also set at where your knee right. will hit it as, you know, if you're not very careful. But uh, how many uh, police officers do we have uh, here we have, for Meridian Community College? We have 10 full-time officers. Okay. And, and uh, these are police officers? Yes, certified through the state of Mississippi. They can go to any agency and work as, you know, deputy or whatever they want to do. Do um, they have to go through, like, the police academy? Yes, we all attend a police academy. It's 12 weeks okay. throughout the state. Uh, because I know for like many six. years when I first started here, we called it campus security. Right. So back before my time, uh, under my old chief, when he came in, it was still security and he transitioned everything to police. Mm -hmm. So it's still a young police department mm -hmm. per se. But they are, it is a police department. Yes, sir. Full okay. service, all arrest powers. I mean, we do rate reports, anything, anything the city would do, we do. Okay. Okay. And uh, do you find yourself giving a lot of uh, tickets on campus car for parking and? Mm, not, not so much <laughs> nowadays as it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, tend to be more handicapped parking tickets than anything. Okay, people trying to uh, get Just as close as the they can door. to the door right. and not having the sticker right. that they need. Right. Right. Okay, what have you noticed in the last, you know, the changes in the last 12 years? Now you say it went, we went from <clears throat> campus security to a police force. Uh, any changes that you, that just you're aware of that you, um, you're glad that we changed it that way? Really, honestly, the biggest change for us was COVID. Right. Because, you know, all y'all were gone. We were still here, and mm -hmm. it was like a ghost town. So it was really eerie I bet. on campus. I bet. So, and, and we've noticed since then, it's, um, the, I wouldn't say less crime, but not as, as much stuff goes on. Okay. Of course, you know, it's not as many students as it used to be pre-COVID. Right. Now we have uh, police officers on campus 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're always here and they're always available. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so if they, if they need uh, to get in touch with uh, uh, campus police, how do they go about doing it? So we have our campus police cell phone. We have an office phone. If you call it, you know, and it rings like four times, I think. 
it'll roll to the cell phone, but you can call directly to the cell phone. It's uh, 601-938-0072. Okay. And that gets you a campus police officer? Yes. They, okay. We have campus cell phones they carry all the time. All right. And as you said, one of the biggest things is just think about what you're doing and don't do something stupid. Right, yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of us grew up in the country, so you sure. didn't lock the door. Sure, sure. But now, this is not the country, so you got to make sure you lock your car and your room and, you know, just and, be sensible. And, and if you see something, say something, even if it seems stupid. You, it, you, never, you, really know, know. you never know Don't what know. it might lead to. Right. Okay. Well, listen, I want to thank you for being on the show today, and I'm going to have you on again. Okay. and just talk about some of this again, but I really appreciate it. All right. Sounds we'll good. be right back. Meridian Community College. For more than 75 years, we've helped students soar. Establishing the first tuition guarantee program in Mississippi, we put our students first while creating pathways into the workforce and offering a seamless transition to a four-year degree. Now is the time to find your purpose and register today because those who move forward never get left behind. MCC, find your wings. Our students have been out and about. They're videotaping. They're doing all kinds of stuff. So be kind to them. We think they're vegan. Mary Hope is a historic house located in Meridian, Mississippi, built by Richard McLemore in 1858. But not only does this house have history, it has another attraction, ghosts. Today I'm here to interview someone who's been volunteering here for quite some time to hear his personal story and also some stories that he's heard while working here. We, we have a lot of people that, that come to Mere Hope and uh, they're not interested in the, the, the structure, the furniture, or the, um, the history. They just want to see the ghost. So, so we have um, pretty regularly uh, people that see things. And uh, one thing that's interesting is that, and uh, it's been documented a lot, that uh, children uh, are, seem to be more likely to experience things like this than, than adults. And uh, one, uh, oh, around Christmas last year, we had a little guy that came in with his mother's father. He was only about three years old, but you could tell he was very active, very intelligent. And uh, uh, they came into the guest shop and he was talking to his mom. And he said, ask if he could play with the little guy there. And his mother said, oh no, there's no one here. He said, little guy over there, can I play with him? And so he was talking about probably, uh, it was a little guy about three years old, about the same age as this guy, that was uh, fell out of the window upstairs and, and was killed. And they had his funeral there in the house. And uh, uh, he described what he looked like. And uh, he had pictures of the guy and it, it, it was the same boy. And uh, so that Mary Hope is known for its ghosts, which causes many ghost hunters to visit every year. So maybe if you don't believe, you should come down and see for yourself. I'm Andrew Priester at Meridian Community College. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the teachers for encouraging me when I wasn't sure where to start. For seeing my potential, even when I didn't. For inspiring me to reach farther and try harder. Thank you, MCC. You helped me change my future. Find your wings at MCC. On behalf of executive producers Matt Milner and Tanisha Clark, media specialist Josh Taylor, and student producer Terrence Parker, thank you for watching. Hope you learned a little bit, and we'll see you next week.